Welcome to chapter 9 of my CEH Fusion 9 material. This chapter we are focusing just on sniffers. So what is a sniffer? A sniffer is a broad category that encompasses any utility that has the ability to perform packet capturing function. Normally we deal with sniffers in the form of Wireshark. Wireshark is a very well-known sniffer but that's not the only one so why would you sniff like what, what is the point of sniffing it is the act of viewing information as it flows over or through the network it's being able to capture packets and inspect them one of the big things here is well why is that such a big deal well it's a big deal because it preys on vulnerable network and protocol systems well networks protocols and systems because the packets if they're sent through the correct type of program or network or protocols well they could be weak uh, what i mean by that is for example telnet telnet sends everything in plain text ftp again the initial set a uh, handshake between well, not really a handshake, but the initial sending of user credentials is all in plain text. Web messages uh, or HTTP, everything's clear text. There is not really any form of encryption there. So if you're able to sniff and you're able to pick up the packets that have the username and or password, then you may know the end user's username or password. So what's the big deal if someone is able to use this? Well, the interesting thing is we have this thing called lawful, lawful interception, and that's defined as legally accessing communication and network data such as telephone calls or email messages. Well, if you're able to intercept packets, you're able to, to actually work on there because just like we can have lawful interception, we can have unlawful interception. So this is protected under law. And there's a lot more wiretapping laws that have been being redefined recently. So you should have the appropriate permission or access to actually intercept this communication. You must have uh, authority to do so. So let's look at some of the more Vulnerable protocols, things like Telnet and HTTP and SMTP and POP and things like that. These are things that send a lot of messages in plain text or have been known to have other vulnerability flaws into them. So why do we have them? Well, HTTP actually has a secured version of that, which is HTTPS. Telnet has its secure version, SSH. FTP would be secure FTP, POP, POP over SM, uh, SSL, IMAP over SSL, SMTP over SSL. So even though these base protocols have vulnerabilities, they actually do have a secure version of them. So packet sniffing or packet analysis is again, being able to capture packets and review them. Wireshark is pretty common for this. You can also use this for legitimate troubleshooting purposes. So do keep that in mind. And this is all very passive. You just happen to be listening what's on the wire and you clone the packets. You don't capture and then everything just stops flowing with it. No, you capture the packet and those packets still keep being processed. So what's required to sniff? Normally a hardware adapter to the network you want to sniff. Storage for that sniffer program to dump to. Normally a buffer, that way we can store it in some type of memory, and packet analysis uh, capability to interpret the results. Honestly, I would also say patience, because there are a lot of packets being generated. So sometimes, not only do you want to be able to capture the packets, but you also want the ability to analyze the packets. Current sniffing programs are the big ones are Wireshark, TCP Dump, or OmniPeak. 
But realistically, Wireshark and TCP dump are going to be the big ones. So types of sniffing, passive and active. Passive is when you connect it to a hub and it's restricted to network segments. While this is more stealthy, less noise, it doesn't always work. We have active sniffing, and that's where the sniffer is presented on a switch, and it does attempt to bypass the switch. This is less stealthy, more noise. You can also have the uh, switch configured in such a way where all ports are also mirrored on a specific port. So packet capturing, if you have access to the switch, does uh, present some unique challenges. Uh, I've done several uh, jobs where all traffic had to be mirrored to a specific port, so they could have a sniffer sniffing on that specific port, and that was for legality reasons. So big thing here is passive, stealthy, active, lots of noise. So first big thing is what's a hub? A hub is a communication device that will take a signal and will clone it. A hub generates everything in one collision domain. It's a dumb switch. You don't normally see them anymore because they're not very common. Switches perform examination of each frame. Switches deal with frames, not packets. Packets is a layer three technology, not a layer two technology. Switches operate and work with layer two. They look at source and destination frames, not packets, and they use this to direct them. Switches are also set up to different domain, uh, collision domains, and that's where each individual port on a switch is an isolated collision domain. When a frame is received by a switch, it does actually have a MAC address table, so it knows where to send the appropriate frames based off the source and destination MAC addresses. It keeps a MAC address table, that way it knows what MAC addresses go to which ports. Ignore the word packet here. Packets are layer three. Switches operate layer two. Frames. So this is Wireshark, color-coded, modern. You can get it for pretty much any operating system. And you can filter. TCP. While it normally works within Linux, it's more of a command line, not so pretty. You can uh, pipe everything to a file to analyze, but again, it's not as robust as Wireshark. So we said active sniffing has been uh, noisy, but here's an example of active sniffing, a more closer up review. So active sniffing means again, the switch is used. The switch actively regulates traffic. So things that will be sent via broadcast like ARPs. That way uh, the switch will use the ARP to help direct traffic. So the switch will maintain an ARP table in memory. That way it can track MAC addresses. We can also do what's called MAC flooding. And that's where we actually flood multiple MAC addresses, real or non-real to the switch so that the switch gets confused. We can also do what's called ARP spoofing, and that's where we can start spoofing MAC addresses. We can also start spoofing the ARP requests themselves, not just the MAC address. Big part of this is it allows for a thing like man in the middle, and then it leads us to the MAC spoofing where you can actually uh, generate fake MAC addresses. Here's an example of SMAC, and that's where you can actually spoof a MAC address. Sniffing countermeasures. Big part of this is you can actually have IDSs and IPSs that are learning the network traffic and what's typical. That way you can start preventing 
some of these spoofing uh, and sniffing uh, measures, assuming you want to. That's actually the end of this chapter. I want to thank you.